Good evening, Zion. And all of you who are watching us live, welcome to the kingdom. I'm so grateful to the Lord to be here tonight um, with each and every one of you as we continue on this journey in the word of God, as we come together every week, every Tuesday night to take two chapters of God's holy writ to study them and read them collectively, uh, and then to go to our own individual study time and take those same two scriptures and read them individually. I pray that this journey has been a blessed one for you thus far. We're coming even now to the end of the book of Genesis. Why don't you even now go and tell somebody that pastor is live, he is on time, he is live on Facebook so that we can do this reading together uh, to study collectively together to show ourselves approved. Go ahead, tell everybody now, send a message out, send a tweet, Instagram post, a messenger on, message on messenger, whatever you got to do, let folk know that we are live reading the word of God together. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this time that we get to come together via technology to read your word, your word that extends beyond time and space, beyond the latest forms of technology. God, we pray even now that God, as we read your word, that your spirit will fall even now here in Zion Baptist Church of Christ, and that that same spirit that falls here on tonight will travel through the airwaves to those who are watching live on Facebook, and for those who will be watching this live broadcast at another time. God, we pray that that spirit will transcend time, that even if someone is watching it five years from now, the same power that we feel on tonight, that they will feel it wherever they may be watching. God, we pray that you will even now put aside, help us to put aside everything that is not like you. We dedicate this moment and this time unto you, that we may read your word together. God, we pray that you will preempt every move and plan of the devil that will seek to rob us of this time that we get to share with you. It's in your son, Jesus the Christ's name we do pray. The name that is above all names. The name that every knee must bow to and every tongue must confess. In the name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen and amen. Tonight we'll be reading from the book of Genesis chapter 46 and 47. Where Genesis only has 50 chapters, so we're almost to the end of Genesis. Take your Bibles even now and journey with me to the book of Genesis chapter 46. Pastor will be reading from the New King James Version, Genesis chapter 46, beginning at birth. So Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. Then God spoke to Israel or Jacob the visions of the night and said Jacob Jacob and he said here I am so he said I am God the God of your father do not fear to go down to Egypt for I will make of you a great nation there I will go down with you to Egypt and I will sh also surely bring you up again and Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. Then Jacob arose from Beersheba. The sons of Israel carried their father Jacob, their little ones, and their wives in the carts which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. So they took their livestock and their goods, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to Egypt Jacob and all his descendants with him. Verse number seven. His sons and his sons' sons, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and all his descendants he brought with him to Egypt. Now these were the names of the children of Israel. Jacob and his sons went, who went to Egypt. Reuben was Jacob's firstborn. The sons of Reuben were Hanuk. Uh, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jakin, Zohar, Shayuel, uh, the son of the Canaanite woman, 
Shehu, the son of the Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi were Gishon, Kohath, and Merai. The sons of Judah were Ir, or Ur, Onan, Selah, Perez, and Zerah. But Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamuel. Verse 13. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Puva, Job, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun were Sered, Elon, and Jaleel. These were the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob and Padan, uh, Padan Aram, with his daughter uh, Dinah. All the persons, his sons and his daughters, were 33. The sons of Gad were Ziphion, Haggai, Shuni, Esbon, Eri, Erodi, and Erila. The sons of Asher were Jemna, Ishua, Issi, Bera, and Sarah, their sister. And the sons of Beria were Heber and Melchiel. These were the sons of Zilpha, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter. And these she bore to Jacob, 16 persons. The sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, were Joseph and Benjamin. And to Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asnath, the daughter of Pati, uh, Pharaoh, priest of On, bore him. Verse 21, the sons of Benjamin were Bela, Besher, Ashbel, Gera, Nam, uh, Ehi, Rosh, Muthim, Huthim, and Ard. These were the sons of Rachel, who were born to Jacob, 14 persons in all. The son of Dan was Husham, the sons of Naphtali were Jephzeel, Guni, Jezer, and Shalem. These were the sons of Bela, whom Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter. And she bore these to Jacob, seven persons in all. All the persons who went with Jacob to Egypt, who came from his body, besides Jacob's son's wives, were 66 persons in all. The persons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two persons. All the persons of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were 70. Verse 28. Then he sent Judah before him to Joseph to point out before him the way to Goshen. And they came to the land of Goshen. So Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. And he presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept in his neck a good while. And Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, because you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and say to him, My brothers and those of my father's house, who were in the land of Canaan have now come to me. The men are shepherds, for their occupation has been to feed livestock. And they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. So it shall be when Pharaoh calls you and says, what is your occupation? And you will say, your servant's occupations has been with livestock from our youth even till now both we and our fathers, that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. Chapter 47, verse 1. Then Joseph went and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers, their flocks and their herds, and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan. And indeed they are in the land of Goshen. And he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. 
Then Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And they said to Pharaoh, We have come to dwell in the land, because your servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now therefore, please, let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and your brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know any competent men among them, make them chief herdsmen over my livestock. Then Joseph brought his brothers Jacob his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh and Jacob blessed Pharaoh and Pharaoh said to Jacob how old are you and Jacob said to Pharaoh the days of my years the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years few and evil have been the days of the years of my life they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers, the days of their pilgrimage. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. Verse 11. And Joseph situated his father and his brothers and gave them a possession of the land. In the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread according to the number of their families. Now there was no bread in all of the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished because of the famine. And Joseph gathered all of all of the money that he had found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they had brought and Joseph brought the money on, into Pharaoh's house. So when the money failed in the land of Egypt and then in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, give us bread for why should we die in the press in your presence for the money has failed. Then Joseph said, give me your livestock and I will give you bread for your livestock if the money is gone. Verse 17. So they brought their livestock to Joseph and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the cattle of the herds and for the donkeys. Thus he fed them with bread in exchange for all their livestock that year. When that year had ended, they came to him the next year and said to him, We will not hide from my Lord that our money is gone. My Lord also has our herds of livestock. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be your servants, will be the fair servants of Pharaoh. Give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land may not be just desolate. Verse 20. Then Joseph brought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For every man of for every man of the Egyptians sold his field, because the famine was severe upon them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And as the people, he moved them into the cities from one end of the borders of Egypt to the other end. Only the land of the priests he did not buy. For the priests had uh, rations allotted to them by Pharaoh. And they ate their rations, which Pharaoh gave them. Therefore, they did not sell their lands. Then Joseph said to the people, Indeed, I have brought you and your land this day for Pharaoh. Look, here is seed for you, and you shall sow uh, the land. 
and it shall come to pass in the harvest that you shall give one fifth to Pharaoh, four fifths shall you own as seed for the field and for your food, for those of your households and as food for your little ones. So they said, you have saved our lives. Let us find favor in your sight, my Lord, for we will be Pharaoh's servants. Verse 26. And Joseph made a law over the land of Egypt to this day that Pharaoh should have one fifth except for the land of the priests only, which did not become Pharaoh's. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the length of Jacob's life was 147 years. And when the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, Now if I have found favor in your sight, Please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. Please do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I will do as you have said. Then he said, swear to me. And he swore to him. So Israel bowed himself on the head of the bed. Well, that concludes the reading for tonight. I pray even now that as we read it together, that when you go in your own study time and read it individually, that God will speak and pour unto you the nuggets that he would give you out of the reading so that you may continue to grow ever deeper in him. One thing that God showed me in the reading tonight is this, that God is a... God of his word. God tells Israel that I'll send you into Egypt, but I'll bring you out. And I'm sending you there for a purpose, and that is to grow you. And Israel had to go through some hell in Egypt, 400 and some years of slavery. But all of it was for a purpose. It wasn't to destroy them, but it was to grow them. And we all know and we'll see as we move further in our reading that when Israel came out of Egypt, Israel came out not as one man whose name was changed to Jacob, but as a nation. Not just as a nation, but as a wealthy nation. Not just as a wealthy nation, but as a powerful nation. So whatever it is that you may be going through, know that it's not meant to break you or destroy you, but God will use it to grow you. Not only grow you, but grow you exceedingly. Multiply you exceedingly. This thing cannot subtract from you if you don't let it. Move in God's wisdom, in God's instruction, and in God's timing. And watch how God does exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And now, God, as we begin to transition into our nighttime, God, it is my prayer that you'll cover each and every one of us, your children, God, you'll give us sweet rest in you. God, even now, you'll preempt every plan of the devil to disrupt our peaceful rest. God, I lift all of us into your hands. Keep us in the way that only you can. Wake us up tomorrow filled, charged, and ready to do with us, saith the Lord. It's in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. And amen. Well, Zion, I love you. God bless you. I've been enjoying this journey with each and every one of you. And it's my prayer that as we continue to read the word, that you'll grow stronger in the word of God. Remember that this is the church where Christ is here. God loves you. And we do too. I'll see you next time right here in the kingdom.